Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? In the late 90s, Apple released a small laptop based on its Newton PDA line. And while its design gave a glimpse at where the company's other products were heading, it also included a small but fatal flaw. This time, let's see what it takes to fix it. The Apple E-Mate 300 launched in March of 1997. It was primarily targeted at the education market, and as such, it was built to be a bit more robust than the average laptop. However, its simple construction hides a serious problem with the display hinges. With no notice, they could break and damage or outright kill the screen. With the E-Mate being a fan favorite among vintage Apple product collectors, and the fact that every unit is vulnerable to this flaw, it's important to fix it before it has a chance to wreak havoc. Thankfully, the process is pretty simple and doesn't require any special parts. I started by flipping the E-Mate over so I could remove its bottom panel. The screws that secure it are covered by rubber plugs, which I pried out using a small screwdriver. Then I could take out the Torx T9 screws underneath. There's four around the perimeter of the machine with a fifth hiding in the underside of the rear handle. A pair of T8 screws secures the battery compartment door and I had previously removed this machine's rechargeable pack since it was leaking. I lifted the cover up from the handle side and used a spudger to gently release the catches holding it on. The motherboard needs to be removed in order to access the hinges. I disconnected the display flat flex cable, then found a screw hiding under the flash memory module. The rest of the screws were all easily accessible and came out quickly with a Phillips driver. I needed to desolder two sets of wires. The first pair powers the display's electroluminescent backlight, while the others go to the E-Mate speaker in the top case. I suspect these were soldered to the board for two reasons. It would help reduce manufacturing costs slightly, but also, since durability was a concern, it would eliminate the risk of a connector coming loose from rough handling. The underside of the board has a pair of connections for the keyboard ribbons, which I got unlatched and disconnected. I found a few nuts sitting inside the top case and realized that they were for securing the PCMCIA card cage. Turns out I had removed a few screws that I didn't need to, so I got them put back in. With the motherboard out, we can get a good look at the problematic hinges. So imagine my surprise to find that these had already been fixed. That doesn't help you very much, so let's continue on as if they hadn't. I removed the pair of screws holding on the left side port cover, then the single screw for the PCMCIA card slot door. The display housing needs to be disassembled, and this is best done with it open flat. Just like with the bottom panel, I pried up the rubber screw covers, then got the Torx screws taken out. I used a spudger to carefully pop the clips on the display housing, first across the bottom, then going up the sides. Once they were free, I could lift away the inner bezel to expose the LCD touchscreen. It's mounted using standoffs with rubber insulating grommets, again for durability, and I removed the screws, then disconnected the backlight cable. The panel can be flipped face down onto the keyboard to expose its ribbon cable connector, which I took out so I could set the display off to the side. Here's what the hinges normally look like. Each has a pair of springs to counterbalance the display when it's open, and they're secured by that central screw. However, the head on the screw isn't very wide, and over time the springs can pop free. When they do, they often spring back against the display ribbon cable and damage it, leading to problems like no image or a non-functional touchscreen. The fix is deceptively simple. Just remove the screw and add a washer to help better hold the springs in place. It's unfortunate Apple didn't think to do this at the factory. Removing the LCD panel makes it possible to rotate the display ribbon out of the way to perform the repair, or so it can be taken out entirely if damage had already been done. Looking close at my own ribbon, 
it appears that it might have taken a hit itself. There are two traces that are damaged, though not completely severed, and what looks like a repair attempt. It is possible, though often tricky, to fix these flat flex cables. Thankfully, there's a site that sells newly made replacements. At about $60 US, they're not cheap, but if you're not very good at micro soldering, it could be money well spent. With the washers in place, it's pretty much impossible for the problem to reoccur. Though in a few cases, the springs may need some adjustment. I found a site that does an excellent job explaining this, and I'll include a link to it in the description. But otherwise, with the hinges repaired, the E-Mate can go back together the opposite of how it was taken apart. There isn't much else in terms of maintenance or repair that E-Mate 300s typically need. The majority of their capacitors are tantalum, which rarely require replacement, though there is a single electrolytic cap on the motherboard that may need attention. Unlike other plastics from the era, the E-Mate's housing doesn't seem overly brittle. I didn't run across any broken latches or tabs, and neither the casing nor the keyboard seems to have yellowed. That doesn't mean care shouldn't still be taken, but it does look like these machines may stay in good shape for the long term. Despite being sold to the public only right before its discontinuation in February of 1998, E-Mates frequently show up for sale on sites like eBay. Known working ones can command the typically high retro computer prices, but units that have issues can go for a lot less. Picking up one of these and fixing it yourself could save you a decent amount of money. The E-Mate 300 was an interesting device that came at a time of rapid change for Apple. I've previously done a retrospective on it, and I'll include a link if you want to check it out. But suffice to say, it not only found a new use for Apple's existing technology, but also showcased some of the bold new design the company was about to introduce. And while it didn't prove very popular during its time, many people find them to be a fun addition to a retro computer collection. It can provide not just some contrast to an otherwise boring looking assortment of beige boxes, but also a way to experience Apple's Newton operating system. And if you fix the screen hinge problem, there's no reason why an e wouldn't continue to work for decades to come. 
If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on social media at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.